In this video, I'm going to show you an alternative way that you can show your active filters in your Power BI reports. So something like this, where it shows you the active filter based on a single selection, multiple selections, setting a certain limit. So if you select multiple items beyond this limit, it will group them up and count them instead. Or if none is selected to show there is no selection. I'm going to show you how to implement this step-by-step -step from DAX so that you can follow it and implement it to be as simple or as complex as you need it. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. So before we start, I want to give a big shout out to Gustav Dudek on LinkedIn, which is my main inspiration for this video. He's posted and implemented this solution already in LinkedIn. He posts a lot of really cool ideas on how to implement certain solutions in Power BI, and I'm a big fan of what he posts in LinkedIn. So if you want to learn more about all the other solutions that he has, I'll leave a link to it all in the description box below. So let's talk about why do this in the first place. We know that if you're working with Power BI reports and you have slicers and filters in your page, if you want to know what filters are being applied to a visual in your report, you simply hover over to that visual, which will give you the options on the top right. And then you simply hover over this filter icon, which will show you what filters are affecting this visual. Now, from my experience, this feature is not obvious to most users, especially if they're not familiar with Power BI. So this solution that we're covering today is a good way to explicitly show what active filters are being applied on the page itself without needing to interact to anything. So let's get started. I'm going to move to my other page here, which has all of the slicers and the line charts as you saw on my first page, except that it doesn't have the list of active slicers yet. We're going to create that from scratch. Let's start with the simplest scenario. Let's say we want to show the single selection that is being made in this year slicer. And to keep it simple, we're going to look at it for just one selection at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new measure here. I'm going to call this active filters. And we're going to use this function called selected value, which uh, we're going to point to the calendar year, which is the column that we're using in this slicer. So if we hit enter and we go to this text box here at the bottom, I just created a border here to keep it consistent. We're going to go to add value and we're going to simply refer to that measure that we've created, active filters. So what is showing now is what is selected in this year. So if we change that to 1997, it will show 1997. Pretty simple, right? So from here, we're simply just going to add something here before the selected value. So now when you have any years selected, it will show that year prefixed by the active filters. Now, this is the easiest scenario, which means that if you have a slicer that is only single select, this will probably do it for you. However, you'll notice that we have this checkboxes, which means that we are able to select multiple years. And if you want that option, using just the selected value will not work. And that's because the selected value only works if the column that you feed it is filtered only with just one value. So in this case, if we want to show multiple values in this active filters text box that we have, we want to show them side by side, separated by comma. To do that, we're going to use the concatenate function. So we're going to go back to our measure here. And instead of using selected value, we're going to change it to use concatenate X, which is the iterator version. We're going to create a virtual table here for the calendar year. And then for the expression, we're simply just going to get the calendar year, just, just the year itself. And then the separators would be commas. So now, as you can see, if you select multiple values, 1996, 1997, it shows everything. However, one other thing that we need to make sure that we check is if you deselect everything, it will show all the values in that slicer. And that's because it's not being filtered, which means that it's technically selecting everything. So in this case, we want to add another check to make sure to only show the values 
if that slicer is being filtered. And for this, we're going to use the function is filtered. So what we'll do is we'll copy this into our clipboard first, and we'll start with an if statement to check if the calendar year is being filtered. So if the calendar year is being filtered, we want to do the concatenation. If it's false, we want to show something else like no selection, for example. And now from on the true statement, we're simply just gonna paste the concatenation. So it's only being done when that column is being filtered. So now that should work. If you have no selection in this year slicer, it will show no selection. If you have single selection, it should work as well. And if you have multiple selections, it will show all of them separated by comma. If you only want to show the selections from one slicer in your report, you're pretty much done. However, in our scenario, we have multiple slicers that we want to keep tabs of on what it's being selected across all of them. So for example, we have the selection 1996 and uh, we also want to keep tabs of what is being selected in the category slicer, for example. So we want to show it in the active filters here at the bottom. We want to be able to show multiple selections in this slicer. And we also want to add the prefix before these selections to show from which slicer they're being showed from. So for example, if the 1996, 1997, it will be prefixed by year. And then any selections in the category will be prefixed by category, just so that we can see them in a grouped fashion. And while implementing all of that, we also want to make sure that if nothing is being selected across all of these slicers, we still want to show no selection. So to make all of that possible, we need to clean up the measure a little bit to make it a little bit more sustainable so that no matter how many slicers you want to have in your report, you should be able to follow a simple standard to do it. So first of all, we're going to go back to our DAX here, and I'm just going to move everything to a return. And this is because I find it easier to group any of my logics inside variables, just so that it's a lot easier to read. So we're going to start by creating the first variable here for the year, which uh, we're going to start with a year prefix like this. And then we're going to do the concatenate here. So we're going to copy this, this part without the checks like this. And then we're going to end it with a closing parenthesis like this. And for now, I'm just going to comment this. And then we're simply going to show year just to show you how that looks like. So if we look at the bottom here, it shows you now the year and what is being uh, sliced in that in that slicer 1996 1997. However, I think I missed the first part, which is the active filters part. So I'm just going to paste that here. So now it will show you the active filters and then year. And the idea is we want to add more of these variables for the other slicers. So let's create one for the category because that's the second slicer that we want to add, right? So category. And we can just simply copy this. And we're going to call this one category, not to make it complicated. And then for the values, we also going to do category name. And then here for the expression, we're going to also do category name. And then from here, we simply just do category like this. And then as you can see, it will show them side by side. Now we're going to fix this in a minute. I'm just going to add a space in between. So, so far, so good. We are able to show the uh, selections from you know one slicer and the other slicer using the concatenate x and then combining them into a single text. However, with most texts, when you're using them in this fashion dynamically in Power BI, you don't really have a lot of option in terms of formatting them. So maybe making some of the parts bold, italic, or anything like that. However, there is actually a workaround for this using a bit of Unicode magic. This is the website that we can use. It's called yatex.com, which basically allows you to get a Unicode version of some of your text so that you can have different styling to it. 
So you write your text here and it will show you a preview of the different text with formatting that you can copy and paste to your text boxes in Power BI, for example. So in our case, we are only looking to do certain, you know, simple styling options here. Like for example, we just want to make the active filters bold, uh, that and also make the year and category bold just so that we can easily see and distinguish which ones are the slicers and which ones are the uh, the slicer names. So what we're going to do is we're going to type active filters here like this and we're going to copy the the bold sans here, for example. And if we go back to our report here and if I put active Sans, just paste it there. As you can see, although it, we are not doing any text formatting, if I hit enter here, you'll see that the bold gets applied there. So adding a bit of text styling makes this a little bit easier to read, especially if you have more filters selected in the future. So for now, uh, we're going to do it for the year and category as well. Now let's go back to writing our variables because we're actually missing a few things here. So the first thing is we want to check if the slicer is being filtered or not. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it with in a, in a variable. That's because I'm going to have to reuse this multiple times later in the script. So it's better to just wrap it in a variable. So year filtered, and I'm just going to do is filtered calendar year. And like before, we'll also do the same thing for the category. Category name. And then the next thing is we need to create a variable. So this variable will do two things. First of all, it will check if any of the slicers are being filtered. And then the next thing is to check which slicers are being shown so that we can hide or show those based on if they're being filtered or not. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to create an if statement. So if the year is being filtered or the category is being filtered, we want to do something. If they're not being filtered, we want to do or show no selection like this. Pretty simple. I'm going to create some line breaks here so that we can read it a little bit easier. And then inside this line break on the true statement, we're going to check again to check which, which slicer is being filtered. So if the year is being filtered, we want to show the concatenation of the year with a space. So the space just makes sure that there is a space in between the category and the year. If they are being shown, you need to make sure that they are in the if statement so that the space doesn't exist if there is no filter in that uh, slicer. So uh, we'll do an end as well, uh, which will basically just combine them two if they're both being sliced. So we'll do an if statement here, which will do exactly the same thing except for the category. So if the category is being filtered, will show the category concatenated by a space. So now, instead of doing it here, we'll simply just show the filters here as a result, like this. And we can remove now this comment that we've created here. So now if we hit enter, that should work. So if we select multiple values in the category, it will show all of those selections that we've made. If we only have selection on one slicer, it will show the slicer that is being selected like this. And if nothing is selected, it will show no selection. So that's pretty much the implementation. You're now able to check across different slicers what is being filtered and show what the active filters are across those slicers based on what is being selected. Now, the benefit of cleaning up our code like this 
is that in the future, if you want to add more slicers, it's a lot easier to do so because you simply just need to follow the structure that we have done here. So let's actually do that together so I can show you exactly how easy it is to add a new one because we actually have a third slicer here, the product, which we want to add as well in this active filter section. So we're going to go back to our measure here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a new variable for the product. We'll use this yay text again for the product. Copy and paste. In the concatenate, we want to refer to the column name, product name like this. as well as in the expression product name. And then we'll also need to create an is filtered variable, same as the other two. And then product name inside. And then where we have the if statement, we simply need to add an or here to check if the product is also being filtered. And after that, on the true section, we just also add another if statement to check if the product is being filtered to show the product, if so, concatenated with a space. And that should be it. So if we hit enter, if you make a selection in the product, as you can see, it will show all of those products here in the list the same way that we have the other two. And now you're pretty much done. So as you can see, we are selecting multiple values here. And as we make new selection, it adds those texts in our list here of active filters at the bottom. However, what you'll notice is that there is no limit to it. So what that means is that depending on how you're showing the active filters on your page, you might find that if you don't have enough space, that it will truncate what is being shown on your box. So for example, here, uh, the box is, is pretty big, but as I make more selections, you'll see that when, once we have no more space, it will create either this, uh, this box here to scroll up or down because this is a text box. But if it's, let's say, in a card, for example, it will add the three dots to show that there is more. And in a lot of cases, you actually don't want to do that. And you might want to add some sort of maximum limit so that if your users will select a lot more filters, then, then there is space for it that you're showing on your page to show something else instead. So in this case, instead of truncating the list of filters selected, we want to add a count of the filters instead, just to save some space and group them all up. So to do that, we're going to go back to our DAX code here, and we're going to start by creating a variable. We're going to call this one max filter display. And this is the variable that you'll, you'll control to change what is the maximum number of filters selected before it starts to group them up. So for now, we're going to do and, and put this to five, but you can change it to however you want. The next variable that we'll create is the thing that counts the number of items that are being selected across all of our slicers. So we're going to call this one total filters selected. And we're going to start with an if statement to check first if it's being filtered. So if it's being filtered, I want to do count rows and calendar year. So this will count how many rows of values there are in the calendar year if it's being filtered. So in this case, we have one, one value selected in the year slicer. So it will just show us one. And then if there's two, it will show us two and vice versa. But it's only counting if it's being filtered. So the same logic that we've been using before. So the next thing is we'll create two more of these to check for the other slicers as well and add them all up to give us the total number of filters that are being selected. So we'll do a plus and uh, we'll change this to category filtered. 
and then in the values category name and lastly we want to do product filtered and product name so now this should give us the total number that is selected. So the last variable that we need to add is the variable that checks if the filters that have been selected or the number of it hasn't reached the threshold that we have set up in the max filter display variable. So uh, what we'll do is we'll create a variable here. We'll call it uh, filters max display. And we'll wrap it with an if statement once more we'll check if the total filter selected is less than or equals to the max filter display to show the filters variable else we want to show the grouping the grouping that we want to show instead of showing the whole list so we'll do multiple selections and then here we're gonna get the count of the total number of filters selected and then uh, we'll say active filters and that's it so we'll replace this one to show the filters max display like this and there you go so at the bottom as you can see since it's reached the threshold that we have set which is five it will show uh, as grouped here showing multiple selections and counting how many active filters are being applied however if we if we reduce that to less than five for example it will show all of the selections that we have made so far so if we do one two three four five if we add another one it will group them up to six and as I mentioned before, if you want to change the max filter, you simply just change it here. So for example, here we have a little bit more space, so we'll keep increasing that until we reach towards the very end. So for now, um, we have some selections here, but as long as it stays below that max display, it will show all of the filters that are being applied. And that's really it for this solution. This video turned out a little bit longer than I thought because I wanted to break down the DAX code that drives this active filters text so that you have a bit of an understanding on how it works. Having that deeper understanding, I think is very important because it means that you'll be able to customize the solution that I've shown you today to make it as simple or as complex as you need it. Once again, a huge shout out to Gustav Dudek from LinkedIn, who has inspired me to create this video. So if you want to check out his other solutions, I'll leave a link to all of it in the description box below. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.